Come on, Soda Pop. Let's go. Thank you very much. I uh, very, very quickly wanted to let the people of Sioux Falls know it is about quarter to ten. This is uh, about the third straight uh, meeting that we've had as a council uh, that has lasted to almost 10 o'clock. There was a comment made tonight, uh, or at one point in time during the meeting, about uh, this is a sign of uh, lack of organization, lack of planning, and in fact, I think the word dysfunction was utilized. I uh, just want to let you folks know that uh, this is an incredibly active city. Uh, there is more things happening in this town than cities that are uh, two, three, five, ten times our size. Uh, just kind of give you some examples. We've had three years of record construction, back to back to back. And this is uh, the end of uh, April, the beginning of May, and it looks like we're going to break the construction record again. The reason we are planning in a grand fashion here is that we do talk about these things, not only at the uh, planning commission boards, as Councilor Karski just talked about, in which uh, Ms. Feagan is now going to join uh, the team, uh, but we also plan in a very, very grand way within the executive branch uh, with, with folks, whether it be our planning and zoning team, whether it be our drainage team, whether it be our public works team, whether it be our community development team, whatever it would be. Uh, they are working diligently to make that happen. And then finally it comes to the city council. And the city council, as Councilor Karski just eloquently uh, relayed, they do have a final say in these things. Not only does it go through a first reading, it goes through a second reading. And uh, there is plenty of time to uh, address not only this council in a public forum, but to address this council in a private forum, whether it be through emails, whether it be through phone calls, whatever it would be. Uh, I have had the pleasure to work with uh, these folks for now six years. Some of them are going off very, very quickly. Folks, you have to understand something. This is a part-time job. And every time they open their mouth, every time they make a decision, every time they take a vote, they are taking scrutiny at levels that you cannot imagine. It is so easy to be a critic. It is so easy to be a naysayer. It is so easy to second guess everything that these city councilors do. But until you're in the arena and until you're willing to put your name at least on the ballot to be in the, on the arena, you have no idea what it's like to serve. You don't. You certainly have the ability to, to come up and give your comments. And every single time, this city council, they have listened to the comments, even if they're reiterated weeks and weeks and weeks with the same comment. We can have the same five people get up and speak and say the same five thing for five straight weeks. And this city council will listen to it for at least five minutes. And all we ask is that you give your name. That's it. At some point in time, the people of Sioux Falls have to understand that this uh, public service gig is truly, it's a sacrifice. It's an honor that, that you can't imagine. But it is a sacrifice as well. If you were to look at the amount of money that we pay these city councilors, and then if you were to look at the amount of time that they, that they spend in this job, serving the people of Sioux Falls, doing things that many times are very, very unpopular, such as raising rates, all in the spirit of making sure that this city is better than the way that they found it, as well as when they leave this, this office, as which four of them are going to do, that the city is not only better right now, but maybe more importantly, the city is going to be better for years to come because of the decisions that they decided to make now. We will continue to serve in the best way that we can, and we will continue to take the scrutiny every week, every day, every hour, because that's what you're paid to do. That's the honor of service. But. At some point in time, somebody has to defend this council, and that's what I've chosen to do today. Sadly, it's 10 minutes to 10 on Tuesday, May 3rd, and 193,000 people are probably almost getting ready for bed or getting ready to do their job or getting ready to take care of their kids or getting ready to pay their bills or getting ready to do whatever. There are three councilor elects that are in this room today, and I commend them for, for being in the battle. There's a number of citizens that have stayed, and I commend them for being in the medal. 
and there's a couple of city employees who stayed, and I commend them for being in the battle. And there are some, also some folks who have who've challenged the council, and I commend them for being in the battle too. But now at 10 minutes to 10 on May 3rd, it was time to, to at least defend this council because of some of the comments that were made tonight. Uh, with that, I would ask for a motion to adjourn. So move. And second. It's been a motion by Councilor Anderson, Jr., who is the chair of the city council, to uh, adjourn this meeting. And it was seconded by the vice chair of the, council, of the city council, Councilor Rolfing. All in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Y'all come back now, dear. What kind of morons run this outfit? <laughs>